search and discovery platform at Adobe is the connecting fabric that joins Adobe products with Adobe customers, unlocking their creativity and unlocking the business value that they get using our products. And not only that, it, it's a fabric that joins users with other users, sharing that knowledge and creating more creativity. Elasticsearch and machine learning is at the heart of this fabric. Many a times I'm asked this question, where is search and discovery used at Adobe? And more importantly, where are you using machine learning using Elasticsearch? If you also belong to that group, I think this session will be very useful for you. My name is Gaurav Kukal, Director of Engineering, Search and Sensei. And I'm representing the whole team here. And let's get started. This will be our agenda for today. Uh, we'll start with vision statement and lay of the land. It will be very important to understand the scope of work that we are doing. And we will be talking about different modalities of what we are doing so that you can help us to, so, so that you can understand what's going on. That will be followed by two deep dives, one on machine learning building blocks that we are using on top of Elasticsearch. It will have some cool demos as well, so stay tuned. And deep dive into how we are using Elasticsearch and machine learning for recommendations. And that will also have some cool demos. Search and discovery vision is to empower customers' digital journey with semantic search, browse, discovery, and generation of recommendations of assets, ingredients, tasks, tools, and tutorials. Everything starts from customers getting an idea. Can we inspire them to take action to start that creative process? And while they are making that creation, can we help them to make it even better using our search and discovery platform? And not only that, can we also co-author with other collaboration users, collaborating with others and making it even better? And once that creative artifact is ready, now can we share it outside with the world or within Adobe ecosystem as well? Now, not only that, once the user has gone through this process, it is very natural to give that knowledge back to community. And search and discovery platform wants to be that constant companion and guide now that is inspiring users to take that creative process journey all end to end, right from the idea to going back to the community and giving back. In order to power our vision, we have four different pillars that we are banking on. The first one is, of course, search. As we all know, text search, like Google is, is known for that. But in, at Adobe, we also do visual search, giving, given an image, find similar images, or different modalities of search. What if it's not about just text, but what if you combine text and audio or audio and video and audio and images and things like that? The second major pillar for us is browse. Search and discovery platform also powers things like files that you have access to, uh, your recent views, uh, dynamically creating views based on different categorizations and styles, people, faces, and all that. And not only that, Third one is suggestions and recommendations. And in this, the examples include autocomplete, query suggestions, personalized feeds, and things like that. Personalized feeds are known for YouTube and Netflix. You get those personalized feeds and you will see some of this thing in action in, in the coming up slides. And the last one is assistance. Can we understand the creative intent of a user? Can we predict their next action? And, and able to maybe generative do generative search where Based on your query, we can generate at runtime uh, you know, images that matches what you're looking for. So there are four different pillars, search, browse, search and recommendations, and assistant. That is helping us to achieve our vision. Now, in order to understand the complexity of search and discovery, it is very important to understand what modalities are we talking about? What is the scope that we are talking about? And I'm only covering the major ones, there will be more. Uh, so let's get started. The first one I will uh, I will talk about is application domain modalities. Here, in search and discovery platform is just not powering uh, use cases, uh, for example, for e-commerce. 
and it 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 has many other domains also so let's start with marketplace adobe stock website which you can consider it as ebay of buying and digital assets the search and discovery all through is powered by this platform the second one is user centric search domain where you are searching within the assets that you are generating means a user of a adobe product is generating for example lightroom or pdf services and any other applications that you within the creative cloud applications and things like that the third domain modality which 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 is which brings a lot of challenge is enterprise search and and discovery so here enterprises are buying licenses for creative cloud for their own teams and here the search is not just what you own but what you have access to which is heavily driven by acls and enterprises can also bring their own custom entities that they want to search on right the last one is social and collaboration where we have some community platforms like behance which you can think of instagram for creative people and and other community platforms where the nature of domain is very different so we talked about there are four different domains marketplaces user centric enterprise search and social and collaboration and search and discovery is powering these experiences all across so this is one way to think of of the scope other way to think of the scope is are you powering search only within within the products or it is all across so actually the answer is both and uh, adobe has uh, lots of products as you can see and these are just few of the many like photoshop and lightroom xd spark each one delivering lot of business value to their customers and search and discovery is powering search experiences within the app and across these apps and when you log into different portals you can now re remix things the things that you may have created from photoshop and xd and spark all together so both of them is part of our scope of work another way to think about the complexity is the query modalities how you query you know keyword search is is basics so given a query of beach you start getting these uh, beautiful pictures that you see on adobe stock or other places in different products the second one is um what if my input is an image but not a keyword right so in this picture you have started with an image and you are seeing different pictures which are very close either in composition color and things like that and you see that in action right the third one is browsing and list views as i was mentioning earlier if you go to assets.adobe.com i want to see all the files or or, or artifacts that i i have created uh things that i've shared with others uh deleted views all of these things are powered by search and discovery platform and it it doesn't stop there auto complete if you go to discover panel and start typing in uh you know tools as marky you will start getting suggestions for that uh multi modality search so i think this is very interesting where we we, we uh, it's it, it's it will be it will be it will be good to understand a little bit more on this now here we are combining keyword which is beach in this case and uh, a part of a picture when i say part of a picture if you see on in here you will see uh, a a palm tree and we have moved that palm tree on the right hand side so our intent from the user is give me all the pictures where palm tree is on the right hand side so it is taking that intent plus the textual intent of beach and now you can start getting pictures so this is where uh, it it's cross model or or multi model uh, search comes into the mix and we are applying this all across the board in various uh, products so just did search give me suggestions uh, when i query and the last one is look up based queries so adobe uh, has created these um, you know mime types um, different type of assets which are very proprietary for example photoshop and libraries adobe libraries have are composites so they can have tons of elements or primitives that are attached to them which is images videos audios textual content all combined into one and there can be thousands of elements within one so there is a need to search and browse within it and that's also powered by search and discovery platform 
there is another way to think. Uh, I, I, I touched on his recommendations, uh, or, or which is a fancy word for discovery. There are two different modalities that we are talking about here. The first one is uh, passively recommendations, passively recommending some things, uh, which, in, which is like YouTube recommendations and all that. Similar to that, we have uh, our own um, you know, feeds that we power at various experiences. Um, that belong to that category. And you see that in action on the right-hand side. The second one is active recommendation. And this is where assistant uh, comes into the mix, where while a user is creating something, can we predict the next actions and help that they need or inspiration to do things better? So that is where, you know, on Photoshop, Discover Panel does that. And we are launching a new, uh, a new uh, feature in Lightroom uh, in, in coming months. Uh, that will also have a similar, uh, you know, flavor to it, where you given an image, it can start giving, you know, recommendations of how to edit it the best way possible with single click. Um, so this is another angle that we should be looking at, uh, asset modalities, right? When I say asset, it is the artifact that are produced using uh, Adobe products by a, by a customer of Adobe. So textual content, of course, search is known for that, like PDF documents or help tutorials and things like that. But we are we are covering images, we are covering videos, we are covering uh, composite documents. I was as I was telling earlier, which are made from these primitives: videos, images, textual content in various forms and nature by different products, and we power such experiences and custom entities. Um, we I touched on this before. Uh, enterprises can bring their own entities to search on when uh, using our Adobe products. So that's another angle. Um, Adobe assets, there are some Adobe assets which float around, which are common, um, which can be reused between different, different applications and, and the whole ecosystem. For example, tutorials and plugins and colors and fonts, libraries belong to that, that category. So we search within that. And there are new modalities coming. Well, audio is not entirely new, but AR, VRs, and 3D formats are all new. So searching and uh, discovering that kind of content needs a different kind of technology. And hence, we are using machine learning to power, and of course, Elasticsearch to power those experiences. So uh, you have seen a breadth, so it, uh, breadth of this. Uh, it just to level set uh, our understanding, we're not talking about one Elasticsearch cluster here. The infrastructure is pretty big. Uh, we are talking about 29 different clusters where the largest one has 50, 150 nodes running. And in aggregation, we are talking about tens of billions of documents which are stored there. More than 600 million read requests per day, 250 million writes, updates, creates, and all that happening per day two different public clouds and four different regions of the world. That's what the infrastructure looks like. Now, if I take a step back, uh, I've talked a lot. Um, these are the, the whole scope uh, and maybe it's covering maybe 70% of the whole thing, but to keep it simple, this is the scope that we're talking about. We talked about pillars and application domain modalities and query modalities, asset modalities, our indexing modalities are also very different. Some have sub-second latency, others are looking for, others are fine with 24 hours latency as well. And the infrastructure is pretty big. So this is the scope of this. Now, I think um, this is a good segue to, uh, to, to go, where are we using machine learning, right? So that's a natural question because that's, uh, that's the main thing that we are going to talk about here. Um, there are four different places I would say majorly, where we are applying machine learning. The first one is understanding the content. As you can, as you have seen, it is not only about text. We are applying on videos and audios and images and all that. So creating those ML embeddings uh, and scores and tags while the in ingestion is happening is critical for our success. So that is where we apply or deploy machine learning, you know, at one place. The second one is there are three different phases of queries. And um, the first one is intent detection of a query. That is also where we apply machine learning, query to ML embeddings using dictionaries and knowledge graphs and things like that. And once we understand the query, using that query 
to fire it on Elasticsearch using out-of-box functionality that you know Elasticsearch provides already. So we have um, uh, done a lot of work on retrieval aware embeddings and, and then it, on top of that, we use Elasticsearch for vector similarity and all that. So that's another place. So now the query intent is there. We have fired a query in Elasticsearch. Once the results come back, that's the third place we apply machine learning. Of course, with you know uh, multiple rankers that we have trained uh, using the feedback loop. And the other part is diversification is also key for recommendations and search. So these are the four places that where we apply search and discovery. So now we will be looking at deep dives uh, into the demos, as well as we will be covering ML, uh, how we are using machine learning at scale. So there will be one demo about that. And here is the, here, I, here, here you go. There are billions of assets in the Adobe Cloud created with various Adobe tools. The assets are of many different types, each of which has its own representation and characteristics. This, along with the gap between low-level features and high-level semantic concepts, makes it difficult to search across different content types. The Adobe Search team uses ML embeddings to enable effective search for text, image, video, and audio, as well as multimodal and cross-modal searches. One important use case for ML embeddings is image similarity search. Adobe Stock released the first version of its image similarity search in 2017. In subsequent years, we've added additional features, including search by color, content, and composition using three embeddings, search by object position and size, and we're also working on a multi-image similarity search, which enables searching on various elements selected from multiple images. For all these capabilities, the key idea is to decompose the space into low-dimensional subspaces and quantize each subspace separately. We represent a vector by a short code composed of its subspace quantization indices. We can then efficiently estimate the Euclidean distance between two vectors using these codes. This approach helps to compress the data and perform nearest neighbor search efficiently. As we've expanded the capabilities of image similarity search, performance issues and integration complexities led us to develop a new approach based on sparse embedding, which we call retrieval aware embedding. This approach has shown promise and we're using it for our current work on multimodal search. Retrieval aware embeddings is a new representation learning technique based on inspiration from the sparse vector approach for information retrieval. The key idea is to convert dense embeddings to sparse embeddings, store the sparse embeddings in Elasticsearch, and use embedding dimensions for recall and scoring. We use an autoencoder approach to convert dense embeddings to sparse embeddings. This approach is very simple to integrate and scales well to billions of documents. Embedding search involves methods of representation learning, methods of matching function learning, and methods of relevance learning. The capability of neural ranking models to extract features directly from raw text inputs overcomes many limitations of traditional IR models that rely on handcrafted features. For matching embeddings, we need a search engine that is fast, reliable, and scalable, as well as a way to represent documents in terms of embeddings, which is where Elasticsearch comes in. At a high level, embeddings can be divided into three parts. The learning phase, which is focused on representation models, composed of two parts, a query model and a document model. The matching function f can be as simple as a vector distance metric, like a cosine distance. The ingestion phase performs document encoding and common transformations on the document before indexing. And finally, the search phase, in which we perform query encoding, query building, and searching using Elasticsearch. Conventional image search engines use a lexical approach that looks for individual tokens and their frequencies in the document, but it doesn't perform well for long queries because of the rarity of the tokens among all documents. Longer queries require a search engine that can understand the holistic meaning of a text query, express text and image embedding in the same space, and then search using the nearest neighbor approach. The Contrastive Learning Image Pre-Training Model, or CLIP model, from OpenAI 
provides similarity capability across multimodal input such as text and images, expressing their embeddings in the same space. Shown here are the data ingestion flow and search flow for multimodal search. The ingestion flow indexes image metadata and clip embeddings based on the image. The search flow converts a user query to a clip embedding and then searches based on text and embeddings. We fine-tuned the clip model using Adobe-specific data and built multimodal search capability using Elasticsearch. We are actively working on this and initial results are promising for both short and long queries, as shown in this demo of multimodal search in Adobe Stock using the clip model. We've used embedding search for the Find Assets by Position and Size feature in Adobe Stock. This search is based on text, embeddings, image objects, and object location. Objects and their location in an image are represented as embeddings in Elasticsearch. When a user selects the object in the UI, we convert the selected object and location to embeddings and perform an embedding search to retrieve and rank the results. Let's see this feature in action in Adobe Stock. First, the user searches for images of the Eiffel Tower. When they find one they like with a blue sky background, they click Find Similar to find others with a similar appearance. Then, using the UI widget that identifies objects in the image, they click on the Eiffel Tower to isolate it in the center. The results then return images of the Eiffel Tower in the center of the image. Next, they use the widget to drag the Eiffel Tower to the left of the field of view. The search results then change accordingly, showing the tower on the left side. Likewise, dragging it to the right changes the results to return images with the tower on the right side. And they can also use the widget to reduce the relative size of the tower, and the results then show images with the tower farther away and appearing smaller. The search engine takes the input text, selected object, the object size, and object location in the canvas, and searches for assets that better match that object with its new size and location. Another application of these techniques is multi-image similarity search, where you select objects or scenes from different images and get search results based on those objects or scenes. The search engine takes the two objects or scenes as input, converts them to embeddings, and then performs the similarity search. Let's look at a few examples. Suppose I'm working on several projects using this collection of images. For my first project, I need a tent image. When I select the image, Sensei automatically detects objects and persons and identifies them with dots. Suppose I like this image of a tent, but I want a different background. I'd like to see it under a night sky with stars, like this one. I click Select Background and then Search Adobe Stock and Sensei shows me similar tint images under a night sky. That's pretty cool. I now have a number of images with the desired subject orange tint and the background night sky to choose from. But suppose I want to see the tent under the northern lights in the sky. I click on the image of the northern lights in my collection, then click search again, and I get results showing orange tints under the northern lights in the sky. My second project requires a portrait image. So going back to my collection of images, I select a picture of the model I like for the subject and another with a blurry street scene in the background. I, when I click search, Sensei returns images that are similar to both the model in the selected foreground image and the slightly out of focus street scene in the background. Finally, for the third project, suppose I'm designing a poster for a pet store. I select the two images in my collection that I've already received from my client, a cat and a dog. I know my client expects both of them in the poster. Instead of spending hours trying to compose a poster with these two images, I simply select both of the objects as foreground images and search Adobe Stock. Now I have several images with similar looking cats and dogs to choose from. So you have just gone through um, how we are using machine learning at scale. And I think those building blocks will be you are being used for search and, and recommendations. And now you're going to you see that how those building blocks are working in this recommendations 
by working through some couple of demos as well. So let's get started. Over the last few years, the Adobe Search team has expanded from basic search to user recommendations and discovery experiences. In addition to helping creative users find assets, we're empowering them to discover personalized content and assisting them during key workflows. We combine the power of ML representations and Elasticsearch to enrich the overall user experience. In the areas of recommendations and discovery, we're using innovations in scalable ML embedding to deliver two kinds of experiences, feed personalization and next action assistance. The feed personalization experience leverages data from Adobe user communities where users share and learn from each other. To encourage such communities to thrive and grow, we provide each user a personalized view into community activity. Each user has different preferences and artistic habits, and the personalized content helps them grow and develop better skills with Adobe Creative products. To enable personalization, we developed algorithms to represent the users and content as embeddings in the same high-dimensional space. Then to serve personalized content, we simply run an Elasticsearch custom scoring script to compare the embeddings that computes scores similar to an L2 distance or cosine similarity. Here's an example of a personalized feed in production, powered by Elasticsearch and ML embeddings under the hood, as shown here in Adobe Lightroom. The Lightroom For You feed displays images based on your photography profile and actions you've taken, such as liking shared images and viewing step-by-step -step editing playbacks. The Adobe Sensei Creative Assistant helps users perform key workflows more efficiently. As you're using a product, our algorithms recognize and suggest ways to perform or complete your task with a single touch or click of a mouse. Here's an example of a feature currently under development for Adobe Lightroom that displays a selection of image presets based on ones you've previously liked or shared, as well as the image content and tone. Thus, the palette of presets is tailored based on your usage patterns and the specific image. This feature enables you to easily find a preset you like, and then customize it further if you wish to achieve the perfect result. This feature is made possible by embedding the user context and image characteristics into the same embedding space and using Elasticsearch to retrieve and rank the best presets. Here's another example of a Creative Assistant feature this time in production in Adobe Photoshop. The Photoshop Discover panel displays help, suggestions, and resources relevant to your project. And the results it displays are based not only on the search term you enter, but your current context, including the tools you've recently used and actions you've taken, making the results immediately more relevant and helpful. This is all made possible by the robust Elasticsearch technology that enables us to apply our latest ML innovations in easy and elegant ways. Uh, thank you so much for being with us in this session. And in the end, I would like to give uh, you know my, the credits to the our whole team, and especially to the folks that you are seeing on the screen, Rand, Vankar, Amin, Nandaja, who helped us to build this uh, presentation. And I'm you can think of as a presenter. And also want to mention Frank Bain and Jan of the great work that they have done uh, at, at Adobe. And, and thank you so much for being with us.